ladies and gentlemen, um, we presented today the memo on the revised public service rules. Um, we are all aware that the public service rules uh, are an all-important tool in the public service. It's what governs um, the, the actions of public servants at work. The last time these rules were revised was in 2008, and so we recognize that the revision was long overdue, and so we put everything that we got into it to ensure that we did the revision. These rules ideally are supposed to be revised every five years, but this has taken more than that um, for us to get the revised PSR 2021. In doing the revision, we had a lot of stakeholder engagements. We asked, there was a circular that was put out um, for calls from different sectors and from various groups that wanted amendments um, to the PSR. We set up different committees to look at what we got. And finally, a technical committee that consisted of permanent secretaries serving and retired and directors were put together to look at the zero draft that we got. Um, this after they reviewed it, we took it to the National Council on Establishment. At the National Council on Establishment, the essence of the PSR was approved. However, there were some revisions that were supposed to be made before making it public. Those revisions have been done, and so we brought it to the Federal Executive Council this morning for approval, and we got approval for it. Um, some of the revisions um, that we made, the first thing was that the 2008 version had 16 chapters. Meanwhile, the 2021 version now has 17 chapters in it. The chapter on APA and promotions has been replaced by a new chapter on the new performance management system that has been introduced into the public service. There's also a chapter that has also been reinvigorated, the chapter on training. This is an all important chapter because of the importance that training has in the public service. We also have a new chapter on virtual meetings. Um, we, you recall that there was a policy document that was approved by the Federal Executive Council. So we've put some of the guidelines from that policy document into the new public service rules. And so we have accepted virtual meetings as a tool to be used in service now. And there are some guidelines there. We've also gotten approval to include paternity leave. This is something that is new, and this is something that the unions in the service asked that um, we include, and luckily we've been able to include it. We've also been able to ensure that uh, leave now is calculated based on working days, not on calendar days. That also has been, has been approved. We also have introduced um, the, the, trans, the transition from paper um, service to a digital service. So these are some of um, the new things that are in the new PSR that has just been approved um, by the Federal Executive Council. Thank you. Thank you very much. Paternity leave is the leave that is approved for men when their spouses or wives um, have given birth to a newborn baby or if the 
husband and wife have just um, adopted a baby of less than four months, then the, the man is entitled to paternity leave of um, about 14 days. So that, that, is, that is what um, has been approved for men, so that the, the men and their babies also can bond well together. It's important um, because we want the, the young um, children and the youth really to bond properly with their fathers just as they bond well with their mothers. So this is a time that um, has been approved now for men to bond at the early stages, especially at the early stages of, of a child's life. That is when it's very important for this bonding to take place. Then on the uh, discrepancies between HND and uh, degree program, it's in the scheme of service that this will be reflected, not in the PSR. It's the scheme of service that describes um, entry points and things like that. And currently we're reviewing the scheme of service. It's just that we did this first and then we'll do the scheme of service. So that's where that will be um, reflected. And um, the difference between the new performance management system and the upper. We all agree that the upper system has become obsolete um, because now nobody looks at performance and um, you just score, the, the supervisor just scores and gives everybody a uniform mark of 10 out of 10. But the new performance management system is based on everybody's targets. Um, you would look at the objectives of your ministry or your parastatal. And from the broad ex um, objective of your ministry, you will determine your targets, which must be related to the objective of your ministry. And then you discuss it with your supervisor. There must be an agreement between the officer and the officer's superior that yes, these are the targets that you're going to work on in the first um, year. And based on that, there will be quarterly appraisals. Have you met um, your targets? If you haven't met your targets, why haven't you met your targets? What is it that you need that will enable you meet your targets? What training is even sometimes you can recommend the training that you need to help you to do your work better. So it's a completely different thing. Officers um, from the Office of the Head of Service have been going around to ministries to, to describe this process and also to teach officers on how to set their own objectives. So I'm sure they will come to your ministry very soon, but we've been around about 12 ministries as at today, teaching them, and at the end of the day, everybody is expected to submit their own targets so that we are sure that um, civil servants know what this entails. Um, so, but right now there's a transition period. We cannot transit everybody at once. Um, we have pilot ministries that we're working on that for 2022 will not use up our anymore. And gradually we will, trans we will continue until the upper becomes completely extinct. Thank you very much. Thank you. The Honorable Minister of State Education was a school student for the Minister of Education presented two memos today. One was for the approval for the procurement of a landed property for the residence of the Vice Chancellor by the Federal University Dutse, Jigawa State. Uh, this was a very short memo which actually sought council's approval to provide accommodation to, for the Vice Chancellor and of course it means the university was purchasing uh, you know, a property in uh, Dutse which will serve as the official accommodation of the vice chancellor. Uh, after due process uh, had been observed, including 
whether the seller had title and whether there was, it was adequately covered by CO4, uh, the council approved that uh, a, a property be purchased for the sum of 161 million naira, 161 million 250,000 naira, including of, uh, you know, 7.5% VAT with a delivery period of two weeks for the uh, vice chancellor, official residence of the vice chancellor of the University of the uh, Federal University of Dutze, Uganda State. And the second memo uh, was actually uh, a memo asking for the augmentation of some eight contra of some five contracts at the university at the Innam Kui University in Oka, in Anambra State. Uh, the significant thing about this contract is the fact that these were contracts that were awarded by the university itself, some in 2007, some in 2010, some in 2012, and some in 2015. But uh, due to the inability of the university to execute these projects for reasons ranging from lack of funding to uh, other sundry reasons, uh, they appeal to the federal government to help complete the contract, uh, to help um, uh, uh, complete, yes, complete the contract. Of course, uh, the contract which was then awarded at the sum of two million, sorry, which was then, uh, I know, sorry, uh, awarded at the sum of two billion, 513 million, 991,695 Naira, uh, due to contract variation, cost of material, etc., is now uh, been jacked up to 4.6 billion naira. In other words, uh, the federal government is making available to the in Namde Asiko University, the sum of 2.1 billion naira to augment the contract which they awarded between 2007 and 2015, which they were unable to complete. The five contracts uh, one, construction of students' hostel type D at Oka. Uh, which was uh, which was uh, augmented in the sum of 120 million. Uh, construction of students' hostel type A at Inewi, which was also awarded, which which, which uh, had uh, which we had to provide an ex an extra 385 million naira. Uh, construction of students' hostel type A at Oka also. Uh, here, the, the, we, we provide an extra 104 million naira. And then construction of faculty building for physical science and biosciences uh, in the sum of uh, uh, 1.2 billion naira, raising the contract sum from the original 993 million to uh, 2.243 billion. And finally, construction and completion of a mini, of a mini stadium complex in favor of uh, another, one of uh, another contractor, uh, which we had to agreement with the sum of uh, 510 million, you know, uh, Naira. Well, like I said, the, it must be noted that uh, 
Eight projects were earlier awarded by the Namda Azikiwe University between 2007 and 2015, and they were unable to complete this, so they, they appealed to the Federal Ministry of Education, and uh, they were accommodated under the, what it's called, uh, 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 I think it's called need, um, uh, need, asses need, need assessment. It's one of the intervention funds that the Federal Ministry of Education makes available to, uh, to assist the educational institutions all over Nigeria. So the council approved that the sum of 2.1 billion naira, you know, be given to the university, to the NMD Aziko University, Oka, Anambra State, to enable them complete five of these eight uh, projects. Um, the Honorable Minister of uh, Communication presented the memo today, and that memo was uh, to seek council's approval for the award of contract for the provision of uh, project management services for the implementation of the local area network infrastructure upgrade project in identified ministries, departments, and agencies in favor of uh, Knowledge Resources Limited in the sum of 847,502,000, inclusive of 7.5%. And this is to be delivered within a period of 12 months. Uh, you know that, you know, uh, earlier before now, uh, Council had already, through an, you know, an intervention project, uh, approved uh, money for the upgrade of infrastructure of the land uh, area networks. The purpose of this is to improve our, our, you know, uh, our communication infrastructure between ministries and uh, and uh, between, between ministries, departments, and agencies of government. This shot at the memos presented by various ministers today, which council has actually approved. I thank you very much. <laughs>